Howdy, everybody. I'm hey. Uncle Bill. I'm the Creepy Kentucky, and if you will, we got a really cool throwback, Uncle Bill. We have we've been around a long time, and we're coming <laughs> up on yeah. some some major milestones with Dead Pit, and kind of starts here. Yeah. Really. So twenty years ago, almost exactly twenty years ago. Twenty years ago this week. We attended our very first horror convention, which was 2004's Horror Find Weekend in Baltimore, Maryland. And it was, I think, probably one of the most pivotal points in terms of the show or anything like that that ever happened for us. Probably one of the most pivotal points in in terms of horror, too, right. for us as well. Yeah, I mean, this was... Late summer, early fall, 2004, and this led to a lot of stuff going down. Uh, shortly after this, we got big into, through the mail autographs, we started our first horror-themed site that was the Horror Graph site, and we had so much fun trying to track these people down and everything that a, you know, a little over a year later, we launched the Dead Pit Show, man. So this was like... This was a big moment in the history of Dead Pit. And since it is 20 years, we thought we would put together a little you know, 20 years later video. Uh, and I think still that you've said, and I agree with you too, that this is probably the, my favorite convention that I ever attended. Yeah. I don't know. There, I don't know if it's just because it's the first one. I don't know what it was, but. It was like, you know, I, this sounds big, but it, to me, it kind of, it was this way. Like, it's like when all those punk bands went and saw the Ramones or something, and then they went out and formed their own punk bands. Like when we went to this convention, there was a whole bunch of people there. And like, we were one of the ones that like were so inspired by it that it kind of like branched off into all this other stuff. And I feel like that it happened, like a lot of these early conventions that happened for a lot of people. Like it just mm -hmm. inspired them to go out and like do shows or magazines or whatever, you know, the case is, but like the, and this season isn't even really the early years of conventions. Like Fangoria was doing conventions in the, throughout the nineties. But I mean, this was really when I think conventions started to take off. This was the beginning of that Maybe. because it, It'd be interesting to see how many different conventions were going around this time. Yeah. I think C I, Cinema Wasteland was around, I'm pretty sure. Yep. Pangoria's Weekend of Horrors was probably still going on. Um, and then may, there was maybe a couple. I don't know if that Nashville, that Nashville con was like early on too. I think Rock and Shock was around because I found this in this flyer in with the program. Yep. So. I believe it was around as well. Um, Chiller might have been. Chiller was around. around. I think Monster Mania yeah. may have been around too. Um, and this one that we attended was one of the bigger ones at the time, but it is no longer around. I think the promoter had passed away uh, a few years back, and they were doing they were doing shows up to I think twenty fifteen or twenty sixteen. And then when he passed away, of course, he was like the driving force behind it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, still great memories of the show. There is a couple of things that I still have that we'll talk about after. But we've got a little video clip that we put together. And I do have to put over, you know, this, this video kind of inspired us to do this video, our video. Yeah. And this came out like a little over a year ago. And I remember showing uncle bill this when I first stumbled across it just out of the blue. I think I just did a search for it just to see what was up on YouTube for horror find. Oh, four. And this popped up and I was like, Oh my God, that's the, there's a lot of footage of Romero there. That's the same day that we met Romero. He has the same outfit on and everything. And I kept trying to find yeah. us in the video. Yep. Which it's honestly amazing that we're not in it at some point Yeah. because like, I mean, we had to be walking around just somewhere in there, which that would have been cool as fuck if we were actually in the video, but 
No, but I did splice in photos and stuff like that in this clip. We're going to go ahead and get it ready and maybe talk a little bit about the convention as the video is playing. And seeing these videos definitely sparks, you know, unleashes some shit in the brain. And I can remember almost the exact setup of that convention, you know, and where everybody was at. Yeah, this is going to be wild because like this is really the first time that all this stuff has been put together and you'll get to see like exactly kind of like where we were in this convention and like as opposed to where everything was set up, who all was there. It's kind of like a really cool time capsule piece too for just like shows like early on shows. Yeah, and this was August 13th through the 15th. The stuff with Romero was actually on August the 13th because that was the first day of the show and that was when we met him. So here we go, boys. Let's get it queued up. Get ready All to right. rock and roll. You ready? Sure. Hold on. I'm going to have to turn my headphones up. Turn my headphones up. Before we get there, this shit started. There isn't much audio in this that you really need. to. You ready? Here we go. Yes. Hi, I'm George Romero, creator of Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead, and many other horror films. Other than finding me in places like this, you can find me at the Horror Find Weekend. I'll be there with the cast members from many of my films. In that some of Hollywood's hottest horror yeah. stars, like Adrian Lion's Bravo, Skate Dark Entertainment, Black, Kane Hodder, and Anchor Bay presented this. For three days of fun and horror at the Horror Find Weekend. For more information, see that at the bottom where it says Dawn of the Dead Old Edition DVD Yeah. Brought to you in part by Anchor Bay Entertainment and Lionsgate Films. And to take you back there, if only for a day, I think this was the first convention that Romero had done in a long time. I think that was the big thing. Like, I don't know if he had been sick for a while or he was taking a break. I think he, yeah. he had moved to Canada at this point and wasn't doing a whole lot. Right. And then yeah. having the Day of the Dead cast, the Dawn of the Dead cast, all and I, yeah. reunited. I can remember exactly how this was set up too, because the line is over here to the left. There's a set of like black curtains right here that they're filming through. And you were lined up down this, that left side and you kind of went into the right through those curtains. And then you got to like meet him. This is back when like you could just sit there and talk and shit and really nobody else could see you or aggravate you or like try to get you to hurry up. Cause they were all right. like probably 20 feet over there behind like that other side. And he was like bullshitting with everybody too. Like it was, it was really laid back atmosphere. 20 bucks for two items signed, I think is what it was. Yep. 20 or 25. It was either 20 or 25, remember. but you got two things signed. I do know that. Yeah. Right. And he was bullshitting with everybody. I mean, made sure to make everybody feel welcome and just, you know, Romero was just kind of a regular guy. He didn't really ever, you know, uh, blow anybody off or anything. He just wasn't that, that sort of guy. No, he was great like to talk to and everything. He just didn't even feel like that you were talking to anybody that just felt like somebody else at the con. There is, I th Lori Cardell. Lori Cardell, yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. It feels like it was, man, it's 20 years ago, though. That's so, cr I mean, I, it, it I makes me feel so damn old. Well, it went by in like a blink of an eye, man, really. What is it with people dressing up in like bride shit? At conv like every convention I go to, there's like oh, the man. evil satanic bride or something. But yeah, this was Baltimore, Maryland. Who gets a fucking shirt signed? I've never understood. I don't, I don't understand that either unless you're just never going to wear it. Right. And even then, like, why would you? It? Yeah, like, why right. would you get it? But yeah, we'd met Romero numerous times after this. This was the first time, our very first convention, of course. Yeah. I uh, still remember standing in that line. I mean, I still remember like the feeling that you had, like standing that, because we'd never experienced anything like that. We never really knew that like a community like that existed. Really, there's the picture of us in that right. same spot. With Same Romero. spot. You look like you're taking a shit, and I look like I'm just getting ready to like eat a dick or something. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. 
you getting hungry for somebody's ass. <laughs> yeah, I saw a laser disc there, and did you get a not a, not a Living Dead DVD signed or something like that? I don't know. I'd have to go back and look at it. I thought I got the. I know I got the Dawn of the Dead poster, not that one, but another one signed. I can't remember what the other thing was. But Romero was the guest of honor at this show, so this was like the biggest deal, and uh, the WGON TV people definitely uh, gigantic Romero marks, yeah, um, as well. You know something a- about this convention, though, man. Like just right off the bat, like it's not that crowded like, when they right. pan out and stuff. Like this was before they got really popular, like that. Gary wonder- Clark. Uh, Antonio, so, I can't remember his last name. I can't remember his last name either. Uh, yeah, there's the, David and Galen, Galen Ross, and David Emmy. The whole spread there, right? And on the other side, you never see this, but Ashley Lawrence was on the other yep. side of them. You never do see her in the video, right? We had met Ashley Lawrence and Doug Bradley at the show. I didn't get a picture with Doug for whatever reason. There is the infamous Tom Savini meeting where he's eating cheese and not giving a single shit about anything I've had to say. That guy had his meat tray. That guy had his, I that swear to God. Best friend. I swear to God he did. And, and this was stuff. stuff that is table, yeah. yeah. 350 bucks. I wonder how much that'd be now. That's a good question. And this is Nicotero's stuff. He was actually selling these at his table. He signed for free, didn't he? Like during this, I think so. I think he did. I wonder how much those busts were, though, man. That would be killer as hell. <laughs> Some more stuff with Romero. Yeah. Galen Ross. At this point, they just, I think whoever's filming this is just going around like people who don't have lines and kind of like just filming them. It's all primarily the do now. Romero dead people, too. Like, they don't really focus on anybody else at all. No. But I mean, this is the whole yeah. body tackled if you try to do that now. So I did look this up. This interview is actually on YouTube that the girl did with Lori Cardell. Awesome. Hi. What is so that you can guy's that fucking too. name, man? That's going to drive me crazy. Uh, we could show our Antonio or something like that. It's something like, is it DeLeo or something like that? Or? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Slowing down today. Starting to get quiet now. Yeah, this is probably, I'm guessing this was later on Friday. Yeah. How long of a trip did we have? I think nine hours. It It was nine hours. Okay. I remember that. Come on, Juliet. Chill. Shut that dog up. I can't. Gary. Oh, Gary, Bulls, we have a two and a half hour interview with Gary. You can hear all about it on the Patreon page. Yeah, this was a very relaxed atmosphere at the show. There was no lines really aside from Romero that I can recall. And uh, Clar and. Uh, Joe Pilato was shouting out lines back and forth from Day of the Dead throughout the weekend, too. Both of those guys no longer with us, too, which is sad. Yeah, we were just talking. Your phone or your. Or how long that interview went on with Gary Clark and shit. Like, how crazy that was. Pilato. It wasn't long after this that Pilata grew out like the long hair or something, yeah. right? I always thought that looked so weird. I did cut out some personal stuff in here because I yeah. thought that would be a little bit weird. To... I thought it was killer, though, that he uh, he was kind of trying to dress like uh, Rhodes as well. Yeah. You got to live the gimmick, man. There's, There's David. David. Yeah, he's yeah. no longer around either. He just recently passed yeah. away. He's packing up his eight by tens and shit. Say hi. <laughs> Hello. I'd love to have that bust over there to his <laughs> right. He was probably the only son of like twenty bucks at the show. <laughs> yeah, I'd say that's probably true. You know, you know, personal. There's a picture of me getting that sign. See, so he had two of them. There, he sold yeah. one by that like, no. point. Don't do that. You know the way you get. <laughs> I know. <laughs> 
Somebody has to be that guy that goes in there. Yeah. <laughs> that was me. He seemed like he was not really into the convention scene too much, didn't you think? Yeah, I mean, he was, he was kind of there. There's, I think it's that Scotty's table. Yeah. Yeah, there he is. Yeah. He also never really seemed into conventions to me, too. No. Like. I mean, he would go, but. So uh, this is uh, our buddy's booth. Oh, the man, legend, John Russo. Man, his booth now at these shows, it's like a freaking, it's like a flea market or something. He's got like three tables full of shit. They're well, going you got to, to get you. Is that Russ? Yeah. He was actually a super nice guy. <laughs> I <laughs> see so you couldn't do you couldn't get that for free at a show now. No. So I guess Jeffrey Combs is not really in this that much, but he's there. Right. Yeah. He was on the other side. As is Kane Hodder with the kind of the skull right. mullet looking thing. Sid Haig was there too. They don't have Reggie Bannister was downstairs. Yeah. Adrian Barbeau. I don't even remember where she was at in the I think she was like beside a Kane Hodder, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So I can kind of visualize most of this when I see the video. We didn't really go go up to the not a living dead people, I don't think. No, not in this one, no. I don't know why either. There's a lot of stupid shit we did during that. I guess just not knowing and everything what to do. It was overwhelming, man. Yeah. And Anchor Bay was one of the big sponsors of this show. They had screenings of all kinds of stuff. I do. I do also remember the sli the cheerleader camp screening that we went to. That was yeah, we did. Well, watch. the one thing I definitely remember is like they were hopping that Ultimate Edition DVD, and they had like a bunch of signs and posters and stuff of it. This right here is uh, Tom Sullivan's booth. Who I don't yeah. know if he does shows anymore, but he's got like one of the coolest. One of the coolest parts about that too, though, was. All of the like Anchor Bay and all that were doing back when that was back when Anchor Bay was like at its peak, really. And they were doing all that promotional stuff. And you know, they had the Day of the Dead DVD, and the freaking Ultimate Edition was coming out. They were hopping that shit up. Mm -hmm. It was just like the, the atmosphere around there was really, really like it was magical, electric, yeah. Kinda. And Monster Mania, this is the Hunt Valley Marriott, and uh. The outskirts of Baltimore, Hunt Valley, Maryland. Monster Mania still runs that hotel. So there's still horror conventions that, that happen there. There's a great design for the hotel. And a couple of things that I just wanted to showcase real quick here is I still did have the program, to further proof that I don't get rid of anything, yep. of uh, the Horror Find Weekend in 2004. And on the back of the program is... Dawn of the Dead Ultimate Edition. That's probably the like one. It, like if I had to pick one physical media thing that you know is like my number one, that would probably be it overall throughout time. And I I'd, I'd, I'd forgot about this, but they were promoting an Arizona horror find. I wonder that how that fall. went over. <laughs> like Arizona's never been a good like. I don't think it did very well. That was the only spot. one that they ever did. Um, yeah. But yeah, great memories. I did have one more thing though, um, that I wanted to show on here that it's a miracle that I still have this and that it's actually in pretty damn good condition. You're probably going to shit your pants full when you see this. Probably. Oh, the bag. The uh yeah, the horror find yeah. weekend bag with the dates and it's got some of the guests on it, Dawn of the Dead reunion. And all that, and they're promoting crazy. promoting Saul, yeah, and Open Water and Juwan the Grudge. I think that was before they actually renamed it the Grudge, right? Isn't that the you? Well, maybe not. I don't know. But yeah, that I was think, the stuff that was. I think that's true. Yeah, uh, that was the stuff that was coming out two thousand, the fall two thousand four. 
it's kind of interesting. I mean, it was what a couple of months before Saw was released. Yeah. But yeah, that was 20 years ago, man. First you would want, somebody said you you would get charged for that bag today. <laughs> like they'd be like, that's five dollars. So that's a, yeah, that's an extra ten dollars. So we got some cool stuff though, man. We're celebrating not only our very first horror convention, but just this time frame, man. This is a very interesting time frame. I know um later on this fall, I'm pretty sure that you and uh, Born to Be Rad are going to be doing a retrospective on a particular show. I don't know if he wants us to say exactly what that is yet, but you can look forward to that. They're going to be announcing that soon. And tomorrow night, we are actually having a very special Friday night lives. Uncle Bill, what do you know about that? So uh, this was totally your idea too. I'm going to give you credit where credit is due too, because like, it's an awesome idea as well. You can bury horror with yourself too. Uh, but you know, coming up with ideas to have on the show, like to, to do the Friday night live show. And then I love doing stuff like this. I don't know why, like I've done a bunch of different shows like this with Garrett in the past, but we've never done anything related to this before, but, uh, Fangoria's 101 horror films you've never seen is going to be kind of like, we're going to go through them. Yeah, we're going to see which ones we've seen, which ones we haven't yeah. seen. And keep in mind, this book came out in 2004. Yeah. So anything post-2004 is not going to be on there. So this is going to be fun. This was like when I was getting hardcore into horror movies again, this was like a companion piece for me because I would come up with, you know, well, what do I want to get? What's the, some of these movies that sound like something that I'd want to see that I haven't seen? So it'll be good to go back and revisit that. I think Rambo and Mark are going to be joining us on that. And a week from tonight, we are going to be doing a complete retrospective on the horror films of 2004, uh, with uh, born to be rads, multi-stream. It's a weird time frame, man. There's some weird shit that came out in 2004. It's almost yeah. like they were searching for whatever was going to be the next big horror movie. They didn't know at the time. Mm -hmm. Isn't it weird to you though, that like really when we started the show and this is coincidental, like in 2005, that was really like the flood of the next kind of big wave of like horror films. That was the beginning. It was the of flood that. of blood, baby. 2004 leading into 2005 was like this weird era where they discovered that like they could make money off sequels and remakes and stuff like that of horror films. And so like it just, everything exploded again. Like Host mm. Hostel and all that shit came out and like Saw and that became like the new thing for a while anyway. But yeah, like it just opened up a whole new Pandora's box of stuff in the horror genre. For sure. But I guess that is it, guys. 20 years later, Horror Find Weekend. It's a legendary weekend for us. Hard to believe it's been that long. But brings back some great memories. So this was a fun video to do. Yeah, I mean, that's, like you said earlier, that's like the my favorite convention. Uh, not just for the fact that it was the first, but it was like one of the more laid back and like just relaxing conventions that we ever went to. and just everything that was going on at that time too was badass. It was an right. integral part in the history of the show too. I mean, it, had we not been to that, you know, attended that show, dead pit probably would ne not be here. Probably would not have happened because that, that put our creative, creative youth of baby into overdrive, if you will. Yep. And inspired us. So appreciate everybody checking this video out. Stay tuned to the original Horror Talk radio show. We're over at deadbeard.com. I'd like to tell people to thumbs up the video, Uncle Bill. Would you? Yes. Thumbs it up with violence and fury and just l love everything about it. Right, Uncle Bill? Yeah. You hit the heart button, then you hit the ass button, then you can hit the go fuck yourself button. Follow that up with the I don't give a shit button. There's all kinds of wonderful shirts over at shop.deadpit.com. Simply the best horror shirts 
On Tee Public, there are others. But they all suck. You can get some Dead Pit Radio shirts. You can get Last South on the left. The Hills have eyes. Texas Chainsaw. Oh, wait, you can't say Texas Chainsaw. All kinds of shirts, folks. You're going to love them. Shop.deadpit.com Special thanks goes out to our supporters on Patreon. Do you know what kind of stuff you can get on Patreon, Uncle Bill, starting at only $1 a month? What's that? Access to every Dead Pit show since 2005. we got almost 200 fan commentaries that we've done over the decades. We have a literal jukebox full of songs and thousands of reviews. I don't even know how many shows are up on there now that we've done over the years. Hundreds of thousands. You need to figure this out now and subscribe to us on Patreon and YouTube and Instagram and help us to one million. The the road to a million subscribers starts today. So deadpitonpatreon.com, join today. Tiers start at only a dollar, but I'd recommend at least the $10 tier. You can do 50. The stock market's crashing around us, folks, but send us money. 